Last month, I spent a couple weeks living and painting in some of Utah's remote countryside. It was the first time I had tried plein air painting in years, since 2015, I believe. My first attempt did not go the way I had planned. This is my second attempt, which went much better and what I wanted to share and talk about today. After getting up before sunrise, we found this spot and it instantly caught my eye with the composition of the trees in the foreground and the mountains in the distance, some of the canyons in between. It was a, a really interesting spot for me and something that I was attracted to upon first sight. I'm using oil paints combined with a little bit of liquid and paint thinner. And I'm painting on a homemade canvas panel. One of the first things that I've learned through this trial and error process is to establish some sort of composition throughout the entire panel as quickly as I can so that it can help me visualize the painting in its entirety. So you can see that even though they're faint, I have some indications of the ground below, the trees to the side, the mountains in the back. I want to at least have some sort of idea for myself of where I'm going with this. And once I have some of these indications, the mountains, trees, the, where the foreground will exist, I start to try and cover as much of the canvas as I can. So, with some orange and gray, I quickly cover most of the foreground and then start searching out any of those remaining areas in the painting that I have not touched yet. And I also try to look for some of the darkest and lightest areas and get those on there. So the snow on the mountains would be some of my lighter areas and that dark tree on the left would be some of the darkest areas. So I try to get those established as quickly as possible. From there, it's just fill in the areas in between and also try to make sure that my colors are as correct or as accurate as they can be. With this initial layer, I like to keep it fairly thin so that when I'm going back over the top to finalize the piece, I can layer over it easily. And so about this point, I begin to do that and begin to add thicker paint and more expressive brush strokes to try and exhibit what I feel and see. One of the things that I struggled the most with, especially with the first attempt, was trying to loosen up some of my brushwork. It's not something that I practice on a regular basis. And while I still will always love adding detail to my work, painting in plein air is something that can require a, a lot of speed and quickness. Uh, the changing elements around you can not allow for the time needed to express detail in your work. And so trying to find that balance for me of, of expressionism and detailed work uh, is something that I was really focused on. And even though I'll always be a fan of detail, I realized very quickly that I was going to have to find a balance between the two that allowed me to complete these on location. And I thought that I came fairly close with this second piece right here. Back at camp, where we stayed for the next week and a half, I poked at this piece a little bit more to try and further my knowledge in this process I was trying to discover for myself. I used a combination of scumming and glazing to add a bit more blue to the mountains, darken them slightly, as well as darken some of those areas to that large tree on the left and some of those other trees in the foreground. But I didn't want to lose any of the brushwork that I had already done. I just wanted to enhance a few things and see if I could improve the painting overall a bit more to my liking. I added a few more tweaks to the foreground, including some brighter highlights as well as some darker shadows. And for the most part, I was really happy with that. And overall, I thought that this piece was a success. And I'm very much looking forward to getting back out there and painting more on location.